Hey, Coach, um, when you look at this one, what was just the biggest difference maker that stood out to you in today's game? I think what we talked about before the game is trying to put four quarters together. You look at the second quarter, 13-point difference, big uh, opportunity in the game that they took advantage of. Uh, so, again, our challenge to be locked in each quarter, produce each quarter on both ends of the floor. I know you said to produce all four quarters. When things were clicking, it seemed as if you guys were knocking down the three, getting it inside, throwing it back out. Uh, what was working well during those moments, and was there anything the Kings did differently to eliminate that? I think overall, uh, we have to have a consistent approach of uh, still moving the basketball, not getting stagnant, uh, still trying to penetrate and kick for each other. Uh, I thought we did that early in the shot clock. Uh, the difference was we were trying to manipulate some matchups, which got us further in their shot clock, which is never a good thing. Uh, so I think too many possessions led to that in the second half for us, Megan. Jacques, there's about maybe four or five times back into the third quarter and the fourth where, you know, you'd get the lead down to two possessions or so. They'd extend it a little bit. You'd get it right back to two possessions. You just couldn't kind of close that half to, to, to tie it. Just Was there a common denominator to you in those instances where you just couldn't get over that hump? I think overall, the you know, if I point to one thing, Alex, is the shot making. You know, if we are able to uh, make shots, it seems that defensively we have a little bit more energy. So we got to separate those two. Uh, and when the shots aren't going for us, uh, to be able to still lock in on the defensive end of the floor. The offensive rebound is hurt also. Their ability to get second chance points, that deflates you at times, uh, especially when you have a good possession and then you end uh, with them having an offensive rebound. And this isn't new exactly, but obviously Spencer tends to wear his emotions with the officials on his sleeve. Do, do you ever have to tell him sometimes just to kind of take it easy, maybe? And, and do you think that sometimes it's been counterproductive, you guys, or hurt you guys at some point if it's maybe been excessive? I think he's cognizant of uh, the, the impact that he has on our team. And uh, we need every point. So whether he gets a technical or not, we still need every point. So I'll say that to him, which I have before. Uh, and, and I think he's smart enough to, to know uh, what to say to the referees at the time of, uh, of the game also. So uh, I'm going to support him. Uh, I want him to continue to put himself in a position to be aggressive for us. And um, hopefully we'll continue to, to be on the good side of the referees going forward. Coach, you touched on the rebounding portion of it. I uh, think Sabonis had something like 21 boards. Is there anything you can do to minimize the impact that that type of player has, the kind of bruiser, strong guy who can kind of get down there and grab rebounds whenever he wants? Well, you can't let the small dudes get some of those rebounds along the way. So he's going to get some no matter what. Just because he's bigger, stronger, he has uh, techniques to, uh, to, to get the basketball. But um, the perimeter players can't get those two, three, four, and they add up. So... Uh, you know, we showed a clip at halftime where uh, Nick goes over to block a shot. Seth was in pick and roll coverage with him. CJ was the bottom weak side. CJ and Seth both got to come and hit, and hit Sabonis. It's just that simple. And you got to be able to give your body up, have contact if we're going to ask Nick to go block shots. That's just one example. There's plenty of examples throughout the course of the night where you, you got to hit somebody and you got to be okay doing that. And for us to uh, take another step forward, we talked about it the other day, I think we were 26 going into the last game. We can't be in that 20 range uh, as far as boxing out on the defensive end of the floor. Every guy got to come back. And if you're not touching somebody, then you're wrong. If you're not helping your teammate, then you're wrong. And following up, I, I think we saw you go small at some times while Sabonis was on the floor. Just what did you like about that going small and what did you not like about it? Yeah, you know, again, I, I like the small because we you have to cover for each other. You, you're scrappy. You know, he, he uh, throws the elbow against Royce. We get that. We double team him. He has a turnover. Uh, it gives us some energy and juice, which I thought we were lacking a little bit tonight. Uh, and so overall, it just gets us going. We turn the wheels a little bit and it looks different. Uh, we got some open shots because of it as well. So uh, it's paid dividend on both ends of the floor. It's just hard to do it over the, the course of the 48 minutes. Uh, you took out Nick late for Dorian. I'm um, just curious about, like, uh, what went into that thought process and how you felt that went. Yeah, just thinking about um, uh, producing points on that end. Um, they were switching in pick and roll. Uh, we don't post up Nick, so it's not like we have an advantage to post him. Uh, so I thought being small, spacing the floor, Dorian ended up getting the look that he didn't make, uh, was, was going to give us a better opportunity to defend and also produce on the offensive end. Jacques, before mid-February, you know, we could find you pregame working with Kessler on the court. I mean, not the easiest thing for a young guy to get traded to a yeah. contender midseason and whatnot. Just 
given your investment in his career, what have you, what'd you make of his performance and how he's kind of fit in? Yeah, with yeah, proud of him, man. You know, uh, pull, uh, like I told him, you know, when he left us, I'll always be pulling for him. Uh, incredible human being and uh, good to see him have success. Uh, he's a guy that worked on his game. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out for us. And uh, Mike's a hell of a coach for him to, to learn. They're using him. He's knocking down shots. Defensively, he's playing well. Um, pulling for him. I um, um, wanted to ask you about the rotation that you, that you went with. You said before that it's just a numbers game, but to put Edmund and Yuta to, to go with them at some, at some minutes, what did you see from them and like, the energy that they kind of brought out there on the court? Yeah, th and this was the message to the group. Each game, we, we treat this, you got to treat it like a playoff game. You might as well. This is where we are at the end of the season. You have to be prepared to play, whether it's seven minutes, whether it's 17 minutes. Each individual, they signed up to be a part of a team. Not to play golf or tennis or any individual sport. This is a team game. You got to do your part. So we needed some juice tonight. And I thought Yuta and Ed provided that juice. Now, the challenge for them is to be prepared if they don't play next game or if they play 30 minutes the next game. Those are the things you do on your own time to have yourself ready to be a part of a team. And one more question. We saw you embrace Mike Brown at the end. You talked about the things that he's doing with, this, with the Sacramento Kings. With I know you want, wanted the win against this group, but for them, they now have solidified that winning record. What did you just say to Mike Brown and just everything that you've seen from him that he's built there as well? Yeah, I told him he had my, my vote for coach of the year. He's done a heck of a job. Uh, we come from a uh, you know, similar family, the way we were raised in this game of basketball. So uh, he's done a, a great job of getting those dudes to the playoffs, 40 wins for them. I grew up in California, so I've seen Laker, Clippers, Sacramento basketball for a long time. And uh, to have that franchise where it is, he, he deserves a lot of credit.